Last season for the Mavs didn't go to plan at all, and it was a very frustrating one for Luka Doncic, easily his most frustrating NBA season in his five-year NBA career. The Mavs struggled down the stretch and then purposely tanked to miss the play-in tournament. All eyes were on if Kyrie would be back and if the Mavs would do enough to make this team competitive and more importantly, keep Luka Doncic happy. With pressure mounting, the Mavs front office stepped up to the plate and made the most out of this offseason through the draft, trades, and free agency. What's going on everyone? It's Luka here back with another video on this one. I'm going to be talking about how the Mavs actually had a low-key great offseason. If you guys can do yourself a favor, please hit a like on the video and please subscribe to the channel for more Mavs and NBA content just like this. We're trying to get to 33k guys, so if you can help me hit that, that would be greatly appreciated. When you look at it, the Dallas Mavericks actually had one of the better NBA offseasons, and I feel like not a lot of people are talking about it. The Mavs finished with a 38-44 and record and missed the postseason for the first time since Luka Doncic's rookie season. Nico Harrison and head coach Jason Kidd both hinted that big changes were coming this offseason, and then they acted accordingly. Although they didn't make a huge trade or a huge move, the Mavs... They did do a lot of things to upgrade this roster. The Mavs do have a lot of talent coming in, including former Boston Celtics 3 and D Wayne Grant Williams, first round rookies Derek Lively II and Oliver Maxence Prosper, Seth Curry, Dante Exum, and Rashawn Holmes. And the biggest move for the Mavs wasn't a new addition, but it was re-signing Kyrie Irving, which was the team's biggest priority this summer. The Mavs gave up a ton to get Irving, so they couldn't afford to lose him for nothing. Doncic pushed for the trade and the resigning, and now he and Irving will have a whole fresh new season to work together. You could tell the aggression levels were turned up by the Mavs this offseason, especially in the wake of all the talk that Luka Doncic was unhappy and his future in Dallas all of a sudden came into question. The Mavs started operating at the NBA Draft. The Mavs turned their number 10 pick, the pick they tanked the last two games for, into the number 12 and number 24 picks, which ended up being lively and prosper, as well as absorbing homes from the Sacramento Kings with a trade exception created from sending Bertans to the OKC Thunder. Lively is a rim-running big who serves as an alley-oop threat and has good help defense instincts. As Prosper was an elite defender in college, opponents shot 24% when Prosper was the nearest defender and 26% on jump shots he contested. I actually liked these picks for the Mavs. The Mavs then added Seth Curry on a two-year, very team-friendly deal worth $4 million annually with the second year non-guaranteed. They brought in Exum on a vet minimum deal and Grant Williams via sign and trade on a four-year, $54 million contract. Considering what some of the other players got, I'm looking at you, Dylan Brooks, this could end up being a steal for the Mavs. And Grant Williams will immediately jumpstart this Mavs defense, which was pretty bad last season. This was actually one of my favorite moves this offseason by any team. In a recent episode of JJ Reddick's The Old Man and the Three podcast, Williams revealed his excitement and detailed his intentions for his position on the team. And I quote, Yeah, in a perfect world, in the role that I start in, it looks like being a versatile defender on the defensive end, guarding the best player, high impact energy guy, but also being able to be a part of the offense and utilized well because not only the spot of threes and everything like that are great. This is exactly the type of player the Mavs needed. Williams knows the importance of his defensive skill set. He's a versatile defender capable of taking on the toughest assignment on the court. His defensive presence will be a huge asset for the Mavs when they take on great teams. Now, the Mavs didn't swing for the fences on a home run type of deal, but they did enough where I think they filled in the gaps of what was missing on this team. When you have someone as great as Luka Doncic, you need the necessary depth around him. The Mavs made sure Luka's sidekick and Kyrie wasn't going anywhere, and then they added guys who can be impactful role players. The Mavs have now given Luka Doncic a chance to compete in a very competitive Western Conference by upgrading this Mavs roster. Now, more moves could be in line for the Mavs when it's all said and done, but as of right now, the Mavs front office has acted accordingly we will see how much better the Mavs will be next season but the overall level 
of the talent on this roster has drastically improved. And the moves Dallas have made have been enough to vault them into having the top 10 championship odds for next season. Whether you want to look into that, that's totally up to you. But overall, Luka Doncic and the Mavs should be much better for 2023, 2024. And I think a lot of people have forgotten about this Mavericks team just because of how tumultuous last season was and how the Mavs fell off and how Luka and Kyrie they were performing well together, but they just weren't winning games. And all of a sudden, the Mavericks go from potentially being a team you got to look out for to the West to dropping to the play and then purposely avoiding the plan because they wanted a lottery pick. And this is a team that you can't forget about them. And if all goes well with this roster, even if they don't make any more moves, I think the Mavs could end up being a dangerous team. Let's not forget Luka Doncic. When he's engaged, he's arguably one of the best players in the NBA today. I mean, you can easily say Luka is still a top five player in the NBA. Make no mistake about it. And it looks like Luka has gotten into better shape this offseason. I know we saw a report that the Mavs wanted him to control his weight. But from photos that we've seen, Luka has looked slimmer. So you got a top five NBA player in Luka. Let's not forget how good Kyrie can be. The biggest thing with Kyrie is just the you know, his mindset and is he going to be engaged? But if he wants to be here and play with Luka, we could very well see the best Kyrie Irving yet. And Kyrie is still a very talented player. He's still an all-star. Let's see if the Mavs can make this work. And with the moves they've been able to make, they got better defensively. They got good role players around their two stars. This Mavs team could surprise a lot of people and I know a lot of people are not going to be talking about them as much as some of the other contenders in the West you know the Nuggets the Suns a healthy Clippers team but the Mavs are going to have the talent to go out there and compete so I will not put too much stock into how last season ended I will give this duo of Luka and Kyrie the benefit of the doubt and all things considered it wasn't a very splashy summer, but the Mavs did make the necessary moves to make this team better than they were a season ago, and they filled in the gap. So we'll see what happens with this Mavs team, but what do you think of the Mavs offseason to date? Are you a fan of what they've done? And Mavs fans, what are your expectations for this team going into the new season? Are you optimistic? Are you not? Do you think the Mavs should have done more? And do you think the Mavs can still do more? Again, the offseason is not done. We're still in the dog days of the offseason. The Mavs could still strike something up. I believe they have one roster spot remaining. So, yeah, we'll see how everything plays out for them. But let me know your full thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. Please drop a like on the video. It does help it a ton. And please subscribe to the channel for more Mavs and NBA content just like this. That is it for me, as always. Thank you so much for your continued support. This is Lucas signing off. I will catch you all again in the next video.